What's up everybody? We have a difficult dermatology question. Now this question describes a child with patchy hair loss, but the skin is not normal. There are scales and there is itching. So this is not alopecia areata because the skin is not normal. And just by looking at the picture, you can make the diagnosis. This is tinea capitis. It's not a difficult diagnosis. It's a past level diagnosis actually. But I say this is a difficult question because it's asking about the mechanism of action of not just one, but two drugs. So they tell you this child was treated with an oral agent, and it's telling you the mechanism, of a, the mechanism of action of the agent in question has the same mechanism of action as to which of the following drugs. And they list a few drugs right here. Now what was given to this child is probably oral griseofulvin. This is the mainstay treatment for tinea capitis in children, and griseofulvin works as a microtubule inhibitor. It inhibits the microtubules within the fungal cells and it stops them from dividing, so it's a so it's a fungistatic drug. And if you look at the answer choices, colchicine is also a microtubule inhibitor. It inhibits the microtubules within the neutrophils and inhibits them from migrating to different sites. Colchicine is used for the treatment of acute gout. It also has other niche uses, for example, like familial Mediterranean fever, some cases of pericarditis, and even Bechet disease or Bechet disease. So answer choice A is the correct answer. Uh, if you know that, if you got the answer right, then pat yourself on the back. If you didn't, then it's okay. It's a difficult question. So let's take a look at the other answer choices. We have nystatin. Nystatin and amphotericin B has the same mechanism of action. It works by making pores within the cell membrane of fungal cells and stuff leak out of the cells and the cells die. So that's not the correct answer. Acyclovir is a guanosine analog. It gets phosphorylated by an enzyme that is coded by the, the DNA virus, a thymidine kinase, and then that monophosphorylated molecule gets dye and triphosphorylated by the host enzymes that then it gets incorporated within the DNA instead of deoxyguanosine triphosphate leads to premature termination of the DNA. And it works on herpetic viruses. So that also is not the correct answer. Furosemide is a diuretic. It's a sodium potassium 2 chloride channel inhibitor and it works in the ascending limb of the loop of Henle. It is a diuretic. It can be used in a lot of settings. It can be used in a lot of diseases in which there's fluid overload. For example, uh, heart failure, liver cirrhosis, some other diseases, but it's not the answer choice. It has nothing to do with microtubules. Amoxicillin is a beta-lactam. It works by binding to the penicillin binding protein, which is responsible for transpeptidation of molecules that form peptidoglycan, which is used to make the cell wall, uh, therefore it's a cell wall inhibitor. And clonidine is an alpha-2 agonist. Alpha-2 receptors are found and the presynaptic membrane. They work as regulators, so if you have too much of epinephrine or epinephrine, that gets stimulated and tell you, oh, we have too much, stop releasing the epinephrine, norepinephrine. So stimulating alpha-2 receptors leads to inhibition of that nerve. And clonidine can be used in treatment of hypertension, ADHD, some other disorders, but that's not the correct answer. You might think why we are thinking of oral griseofulvin, and the reason behind that is that Tinea infections or dermatophytoses of the skin usually respond to topical treatment with azoles, but nystatin is not effective. However, tinea capitis, infection of the scalp, tinea unguum or encomycosis or infection of the nail, and more severe tinea corporis, tinea pedis, tinea cruris usually require an oral agent. And that oral agent is usually griseofulvin. Okay, but I've read that oral terbenafine can also be used. So why is this question not talking about oral terbenafine? Well, yes, that is true. Some guidelines state that oral terbenafine and griseofulvin can both be used for the treatment of tinea capitis. But in the exam setting, it's probably referring to griseofulvin. But this is a reason why I've added this piece of information that PSR of the lesion reveals microsporum canis, or canis, however you pronounce it. Because studies actually reveal that griseofulvin is more effective against microsporum canis, but terbenafine is actually more effective against trichophyton species. So I've added this piece of information just so this question doesn't become misleading. And you don't have to worry about that. They don't expect you to be a dermatologist. They just want you to know that tinea capitis can be treated by oral griseofulvin, and it has to be oral. They also want you to know the mechanism of action. It's a microtubule inhibitor, 
and they also want you to know that you only treat the patient you don't need to treat the contacts they ask you about that they tell you do we treat the patient only or do we need to treat the contacts as well there's no need you only treat the patient and the contacts only if they develop the disease you treat them there's no need to give them prophylactic therapy now there's another set of class called microtubule inhibitors working as cytotoxic agents like vincristine which can potentially be an answer choice in this case again it's it's a past level diagnosis However, it can be a bit confusing because you have to know the treatment for it and the mechanism of action of two drugs rather than just one. Uh, so that was it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching. See you around.